Hi everybody. How's it going? Hey, welcome to another Wind Down Wednesday. Yep. It is the day before St. Patty's Day, so I've got my green on, even though I'm not really Irish. I don't have green on. I gotta find some more green to wear tomorrow so I don't get pinched. Well, I like <laughs> black t-shirts, so. <laughs> I know, you're like, I don't care. Nobody's gonna pinch Pin me. Pinch? <laughs> No, it's kiss me, I'm Irish. I know, but that's what kids do at school. They pinch you if you're not wearing green. I'm not I'm not Irish. I'm hey, Italian. Hey, but you know what? That doesn't matter because we're on spring break. That's right. Who cares? So I don't have to deal with any of this. And there's kids. no... I, I, we don't have to drink green beer either. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that's not a Not green here. wine. No. We drink green wine. Definitely not drinking green wine I'm going to dye that green. Um, no. We could get some green dye right no. now. No, I don't think so. Come on. The people want to see this. No, we don't want to ruin it. Oh. So tonight, we have for you guys the um, Mixed Track Rosé in collaboration with a, um, a brand of vineyard called No Sex for Butterfly, which we've talked about in another one of our videos before, but we'll explain again why that is the name of that company. And we also have for you the Middle Jean Velvet Zinfandel, which we've never had before, never so had we're going to be trying this one out. Um, and that's also a wine we're going to be sharing at, at, our, the next, party. Um, yeah, at our next at wine the tasting wine party. party. Yes at the end of this month. So, yep. at the wine party, we're, we're going to go ahead and <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started. With our Have we mixed track rosé. Um, no, we haven't, but I saw the wow. description. I know. I saw cuz I'm normally not a big like rosé fan cuz I feel like it's too fruity and, and sugary and everything, but there, we have a lot of these wines. It's actually very low in mm. residual sugar. Mom would would be interested in this, so would your dad. It's not, I don't, well, we'll have to taste it and see, but it doesn't sound like it would be super sweet, but it is fruity with notes of strawberry, watermelon, and it also said, um, it doesn't look very effervescent. Like, no, this is not a, this is not a bubbly. This is just a still rosé. Okay. Um, but this also said that it had, it. um, some kind of, um, of herb. I think it was basil. So I heard those descriptions and I was like, hmm, that sounds interesting. Um, so yeah, notes of strawberry, watermelon, basil, and um, blood orange zest with a hint of salinity. Wow. So I, I, it just sounded interesting to me. So I was like, wow. Oh, with a little mix of basil I in there? I took a little sip of it, but try, just try it, right? Cheers. Okay, cheers. I got it. I want you to. Now, the smell is kind of throwing me off because it doesn't necessarily smell like like fruity to me. I'm getting some other kind of, almost like a sour kind of smell. Just taste. Okay. Anything. Is it the basil? Before we eat anything. The basil that's throwing it me off? It's good, isn't it? It's very light and fresh. It's good, isn't it? But, oh, now I do get the aftertaste of, like, strawberry and watermelon. Mm hmm It's right here. Do you think with the... the, the with pepper. The basil is kind of... Forcing those flavors? It's doing something with the taste, but I like it. Yes. Oh, I really like that. The basil is forcing those flavors. Now, what other kind of... Um, we're going to talk about what foods they suggest that it pairs well with, but um, just like after Chinese. tasting it, like what kind of what kind of foods... Actually, the Chinese was meant to go with the, the Zinfandel later on, but... Was oh, that too spicy? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, maybe no, it should come with a warning label. <laughs> We have, a, we have like a spicy like pepper um, garlic dip or something. Woo! <laughs> I took a big whack of that too. My god, my tongue is burning. Now because okay. it says that it, it has notes of, um, oh, I, just, I really, ooh, I love the way that basil plays off of the, the fruity flavors. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so it says um, fruity and... Um, Pretty crisp and juicy, all combined into a rich, rosy hue uh, that makes it what's a, a striking rosé collaboration. A blend of 90% Syrah and 10% Grenache. Syrah. So it takes on the same flavors from other wines you might find from southern France. Yep. Okay. Um, zingy and fresh with, fl with flavors of summer watermelon, ripe berries, and blood orange. Um, a zesty, bright finish and a beautiful minerality that make it versatile rosé that pairs well with a variety of different foods. So... Yeah, I definitely. What is a blood orange? It's just a type of orange. It's like a like a, a more of a, a red kind of meaty inside. Oh, okay. As opposed to like an orange inside. Um, so the minerality. I think that's what the the basil is kind of and the and the salinity. Those two together, I think, are what are giving it the, oh, this like, is excellent. the minerality flavor that kind of cuts off of what would normally I I think would be very like fruity and and, um, and sweet. Let me just say this. I wasn't supposed to eat the spicy Chinese stuff. 
but it definitely cut that spiciness. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole left side of my mouth is on fire, but now it's not anymore. Okay. That stuff is really hot. <laughs> that left-hand side stuff. Yeah, I don't know that I would necessarily pair something spicy with this fruit. Definitely yes. like fruitier dishes. I have a little bit of um, a strawberry butter here and some brie cheese that I thought might um, go well because play off of the, the notes of strawberry flavor in it. Um, so it says it pairs well with hard cheeses, roasted chicken, and Pinterest-worthy charcuterie boards. So definitely like a, a nice little mixture. Thank you. A nice little mixture of cheeses and meats and um, I, I mean I, I absolutely agree with that. I think it's totally the, the perfect kind of sipping wine, um, even at brunches. Oh yeah. Um, I, I, I could kind of see it maybe with some of these other um, with other meals, mm -hmm. but definitely I think this is much. It, it goes much better with um, a snacky like this. kind of wine. Yeah. So if you're just having one of those nights where you don't feel like cooking and you just kind of kind of make a little board of snacks. I think this would totally be perfect for that. And what a beautiful rosé color for the springtime coming up. It yeah. just screams springtime. And with like the summery watermelon and strawberries, like those are all perfect for springtime and into summer. I mean, who wouldn't want to sit here on a night like this? It's overcast, breezy. We've got a charcuterie board of cheese, peppers, all these different things. Mm -hmm. We've got mixed, we got almonds and pistachios, and we've got some dark chocolate, crostinis. We're, we're a little really good wine. light on the fruits and veggies this time, but then we've got a lot of different kinds of proteins. Who wouldn't want to sit here with us right now? Oh, yeah. And just relax, listen to some tunes, get into it. Now, the smoked Gouda definitely took the edge off of that mm -hmm. spicy, too. I don't know what this is. That's just sharp cheddar. Oh, um, crap. White sharp cheddar. I mean, definitely any kind of um, fruit that the strawberry butter plays off of the wine just kind of brings out more of those fruity flavors. Right. Um, it's just, it's perfect. This is a delicious, light, slightly sweet, um, just because of the, the fruitiness, but definitely not like, not sugary sweet. It takes the edge off of sharp cheeses. Mm. So if you try the, the sharp cheddar and take it, it takes the edge off of it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. And the smoked Gouda with the wine cuts spicy food. Again, I never thought I was a rosé drinker because I always thought they were too sweet. But there's been several that we've had through Scout and Cellar, but this is delicious. I, I definitely, I need to put this in my regular rotation. I love this. It's not too sweet. No. It's not heavy. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? And the balance to of light, the, the... You get home on a Monday night from work, you'd have this right Oh, just, yeah, have, have a glass while I'm making dinner. Right. I mean, the the, the, the basil definitely plays off of the, the fruitiness and, and gives it that... that I know we say minerality it's sometimes. Good. People, really, really good. People think like like metal and like oh that's that an off putting taste. What vintage but would that be? What this year? is this is definitely it, they they, best, they they play off each other and really make a, a delicious flavor. This is the 2020 mixed track rosé. Okay. So it's in collaboration with No Sex for Butterfly, which we've talked about before. Okay. Why don't you tell them? The okay. So oh, real fast. This is 12.5 percent alcohol and 0 0.5 grams per liter of residual sugar. So it's it's very low, and and so that's what it's not like overly sweet. But it's it's absolutely delicious. Okay, so um, this one is uh, grapes that were harvested from vines planted 25 years ago in France. After harvest, the grapes were moved into cement tanks to ferment for eight days on organic, non-GMO select yeast, and then aged in cement tanks until bottling, unfined, and unfiltered. Okay, so this particular vineyard, they have a very unique way of how to keep the pests away from their from their grapes and from their vines through this growing process without having used pesticides. So, it's a natural vineyard management tool used in organic uh, viticulture. Farmers install tiny transmitters that release a combination of female pheromones that confuse males trying to locate a non-existent female. So, no sex for butterfly means no caterpillars, which can eat leaves and fruit on the vine. No caterpillars means no need to use pesticides to kill them, allowing the grapes to be the star. How smart is that? Like, I don't know who came up that with that, is but... That's crazy. But, I, I mean, mean... that's crazy. Think about all the different options and ways that you have out there to... Might as well just spray everything ...do with things pesticides. without putting chemicals on it. The problem the pesticides get on everything. Everything we eat. I bet you these almonds have some kind of pesticides. Well, and they're really bad for you when you get you know, them into your body. But I'm going to eat them anyway, so it's all <laughs> delightful. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, th there are different nuts that you can get that say, like, you know, non-GMO and... Organic. Yeah, all that kind of stuff on there. So, I mean, definitely don't be scared by the idea of clean crafted wine. No added uh, chemicals, no no colors, no fillers, it's no not sweeteners. Diet. But it's not diet wine. These wines are still very full of flavor, mm -hmm. which we can tell you, we've done a little taste comparison with some other wines that tout themselves as organic and, and other things like low sugar and everything else. And, and you'll it, see them these, at the store. These wines blow them out of the park. All right, and there's particular wines you'll see at the store that, that well, depending on what state you're in, mm -hmm. grocery store or liquor store, maybe there's a runner, maybe there's somebody that's on there, whatever, but it's, uh, those wines aren't bad. We've had them. They're not bad. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say they're bad. They were drinkable wines, but they, but these are a step above. Those they're, wines didn't have as much flavor. Right, and these are definitely a step above those wines. Mm -hmm. These are more flavorful and, and they definitely can taste the fruit, the grapes, and all of the, the magic that they put into them. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think this one would, um, would be great where, um, with like a springtime salad. If you have like little mandarin oranges. Mix. And you had some, you know, like um, candied uh, walnuts and or or something the show, like the other that. Night where they made a, a watermelon salad. My mom makes this really great uh, like strawberry and walnut salad. Walnut? And with like spinach. Mm -hmm. It's 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 delicious. It's nice and light and fruity for springtime or summertime. You want to know a secret? What? I never used to like walnuts mm -hmm. until I had those pecans from Texas. Really? Pecans? Pecans. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Pecans. You don't, we don't pee in a can. They're pecans. Pecans. Mm -hmm. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> But anyways, so it was it was fun having this uh, time with you. Um, this is a new wine for us. We've never yeah, had it we've before. we've never had it before, but highly recommend it. This is highly, delicious. highly recommend. And in the comments below, I will put the links for both of these wines. And uh, like, comment, subscribe to our videos. Go on our event page, on our Facebook page, go on events. We have the wine tasting coming up on the 27th. Go ahead and, and, and mark whether you want to come or not. Contact us. Just remember, comment and, and subscribe and, and everywhere we're at. And uh, other than that, have a good uh, Wednesday evening and happy St. Patty's Day. All right, bye everybody. See you later.